A year ago today, Howard County confirmed its first case of COVID-19. We immediately declared a state of emergency and Howard County enclosed the mall in Columbia and shops at Savage Mill, as well as the movie theaters, hoping to stop unknowing spread of a virus that was clearly present in our community. Since that day, we've now recorded more than 16,000 cases and sadly lost 223 of our neighbors. These neighbors are families, friends, loved ones. Each of these individuals are more than a number. They were loved and they will be missed. I'd like to take a moment of silence right now to remember and honor those who are lost in our community, around our state, our nation, and our world. Thank you. The devastation, loss, and trauma from this pandemic will reverberate throughout generations. Our healthcare workers and first responders, all of those who were deemed essential, have worked around the clock for a year. Waves of unemployment, business closures, and loss of income left residents without a way to pay for their rent, their mortgage, and has forced families to choose sometimes between having a home or putting food on the table. For many of our residents, the struggle of social isolation has been overwhelming. For many, a year without seeing family or friends or just the simple things that we took for granted, like hugging a loved one. Our efforts have not been in vain, however. Our community has consistently had lower positivity rates and case rates than many other jurisdictions. And that is because of all of you. Many Howard County residents and businesses alike listened when we asked everyone to stay home at the beginning of this pandemic. Listened when we asked to wear your mask, to physically distance, and wash your hands. With all the challenges of the past year, we know that this moment calls for reflection and to find the opportunities to improve and move forward together stronger. In November, I issued an executive order to establish the HOCO Rise Collaborative, not knowing where we would be in this pandemic, whether we would be in a worse place or at that time, if we would even have access to vaccine. But we remained hopeful, anticipating that we would be in a better place as spring comes. The collaborative was charged with evaluating key areas in our community and of our response. In the areas of job and the economy, family opportunities, education and workforce development, our public health response, and our government response. Stakeholders from around our county met my ambitious goal to produce recommendations for these areas in 100 working days. They worked through the holidays and the winter surge of cases to lay out what is needed to emerge on the other side of this pandemic together. Today, we're joined by many members of the collaborative to help us define our roadmap. Our roadmap to a new normal and hopefully an even better normal. I'm pleased to welcome the chairs of each work group today who have already advised on many of the actions we have begun. With the fluidity of the situation, we did not want to wait for the report release to implement some key recommendations that might have immediate positive impact. And before I pass it over to this incredible team who will outline the work and recommendations of the collaborative, I just want to take a moment to say thank you. 
Thank you to my friend and former county executive, Ken Ullman, for stepping up in a time of great need in Howard County, and to all the members and chairs of our collaborative for digging into the challenges of this pandemic and looking at every aspect of our daily lives. Thank you to our extraordinary doctors, nurses, healthcare workers at Howard County General and around the region who have been on the front lines of this fight for a year. Thank you to Dr. Rossman and our entire team at the Howard County Health Department who have faced this once in a lifetime crisis with determination. And finally, again, thank you to all the residents and businesses of Howard County. I know how truly difficult it has been for this past year. I'd like to recognize our gracious host today, the Charmery, who opened up their doors last week and are a shining example of resilience and the many, many more doors that will continue to open. We can all sense the end of this pandemic is near, and that wouldn't be possible without everyday actions that each of you take to help keep our community safe. Thank you. All right, good morning, everybody. I will be incredibly brief because on this wonderfully chilly morning, obviously we all um, need some ice cream. Um, <laughs> Because, uh, no, it, because ice cream really does make everything better, actually. Um, and uh, um, what, a, what a great uh, opportunity to be here and welcome the Charmery uh, to uh, coming home to uh, Howard County and Columbia. Um, let me just say really briefly, thank you to the county executive for, um, for, for uh, asking me to, to serve in this, in this role. Um, thank you to the county executive for having the forethought to, uh, in the middle of a crisis, taking moment to bring together a group of staff and citizens uh, throughout the private sector and public sector in the county to come together, which is hard during a crisis to be able to, to, to not only think about what you're dealing with in the moment, but also to be thinking towards the future as we come out of this crisis, how do we emerge stronger and more resilient? And so uh, uh, thank you for your leadership. Uh, thank you to everyone who spent time and energy on this. I think hopefully you'll find the recommendations to be uh, meaningful in moving the county forward, not just during this time. Obviously, these are very tough times for uh, folks in, in, in every walk of life, private sector and public sector, to make decisions because things keep evolving uh, on a daily basis. But to recognize that there are some things that have emerged through this, like the need to focus on digital equity, the, the need to focus on making sure we're all included and, and, and come out of this uh, in, in a stronger, more equitable uh, way uh, so that we thrive in Howard County in the future it is really a testament to, to everybody here for your hard work. And so thank you for the opportunity. Um, I know there's a lot of value in this uh, report and I know we'll be a stronger community because of it. So thank you very much. So with information changing frequently, often on a daily basis, the Public Health Work Group decided to focus on two key questions. The first is, what do people and communities need to make an informed decision about the COVID vaccine? The second is, what supports do people and communities need to increase registration for the vaccine as soon as supply becomes available? Various surveys have identified a significant number of individuals across the country, as well as here locally, have adopted a wait and learn position when it comes to the vaccine. Our recommendations center around steps that the county can take to increase vaccine acceptance, with particular emphasis in communities that have been disproportionately affected by COVID-19. And as the county executive said earlier, they did not wait until the release of the report today to begin implementing key recommendations around public health response. The communication steering committee is already up and running, along with a subgroup to focus on Amer African American and Latinx communities. Outreach efforts are underway, as well as engaging with key trust brokers. COVID has shown us many things. One is the importance of public health and a strong public health infrastructure, a pandemic ready public health infrastructure. We need to ensure that our local health department has what it needs to be a system for prevention and health equity. Our work group provided additional short and long-term recommendations to, to support a strong local public health infrastructure. 
funding obviously is key, but we also need the ability to remain engaged in communities outside of a crisis and to build capacity such as community health workers and health promoters. I want to thank everyone who gave up their time to participate in the work group, and it was a really great experience, and thank you for the opportunity. I'm grateful to be here um, today with County Executive Calvin Ball and former County Executive Ken Allman. Having worked with both of you, I know that you are both insightful visionaries and have worked hard to ensure that Howard County will be the best place to live, work, and play it can possibly be. In my 32 years in Howard County government, I've worked through many emergencies, historic snowstorms and floods, tornadoes and a derecho, and other natural disasters, but I could not imagine that we would encounter a global pandemic. This past year has challenged all of governance, every aspect, in every way. But I'm proud that we have an experienced and committed team who has and will continue to bring us through. I'm proud that in this past year, our government has distributed $58 million in CARES funding, increased teleworking opportunities for county employees by 34%, conducted 1,100 COVID-19 specific trainings for county employees, conducted nearly 29,000 in remote internal meetings, and 1,500 meetings for the public. We've also upgraded our HVAC system to MERV 13 filters where possible for the highest level of filtration. We've also provided more than 1.2 million units of PPE to Howard County healthcare entities, established child care sites for first responders, alternate care sites, and expanded homelessness housing, and assisted in coordinating and hosting approximately over 60 pop-up pantries for those who are in food insecure. As the CAO and chair of the Government Response Work Group, I am pleased that we develop recommendations to keep us evolving and modernized. It was important to me that our work group members recommend both what we need to adopt and what we need to leave behind to be more adequately address the needs of Howard County's employees and residents facing this pandemic. Among the many recommendations from the work group provided, some salient ones include implementing a digital visitor management system when we open to the public, reducing our fleet by 15% to increase efficiency, and, con and continuing to explore opportunities for teleworking. And finally, adding soft phones to computers to ensure enhanced remote business. These are just a few. This collaboration required a lot of work and time and effort for all involved, especially considering the demands of and responding to the challenges of the pandemic itself. But we can now begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel. In conclusion, I want to thank my staff, all department heads and administrators for their commitment to keeping Howard County safe and moving forward. Thank you. When we began this process over 100 days ago, our world and economy was in a much different place. We were seeing weather get colder, COVID cases number, COVID case numbers rising, and that is what made this collaborative that much more urgent and important. The need to listen to our impacted businesses and develop meaningful recommendations that address not only the short term, but also will help our community in the long term. Today, we find ourselves embracing optimism as we welcome warmer weather and the easing of business restrictions, witness the widespread deployment of vaccines, and businesses begin to gain momentum. While we make gains in the unemployment rate, perhaps we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. However, this is no, not, this is no time to let our guard down. The key objectives of the Job and Economy Work Group were to increase communication and cohesion within industries, ensure industries have access to support and resources, and establish an information sharing culture and better understand the needs of various industries. Using data to drive our initial framework, the work group divided into two separate subgroups to address the needs and concerns on a more specific level. We convened and listened to businesses from the most exposed sectors that were forced to close or significantly curtail operations such as restaurants and retail operations. We also heard from essential businesses such as manufacturing and cybersecurity, firms that were impacted in different ways. And across both groups, we were sure to include the voices of veterans and minorities. The specific recommendations were a product and a collaboration from our business community and are designed to not only assist our businesses today, 
but help position our community for the long-term resiliency. Perhaps the most significant finding from this process is that it demonstrates how interconnected we are. While each work group had its specific issues to examine and provide recommendations, our entire community truly is a collaboration and we work, we work better together when the community becomes better. So I would like to thank County Executive Ball. You certainly recognize this and your leadership throughout this pandemic has made our community better. Thank you for your vision to convene this task force and I personally thank you and I want to thank the work group and everyone that contributed to this to serve and work as work group chair. Thank you. First, I would like to thank County Executive Ball for forming the Hoko Rise Collaborative, former Executive Allman for chairing it, and all the education and workforce work group members who worked tirelessly to put the report together. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted almost every area of daily life for Howard County residents and businesses, evidenced by the unprecedented unemployment numbers, as well as businesses that were forced to close their doors. The main goal of the education and work group, work group was to develop key recommendations regarding practices and policies that could assist residents in Howard County to obtain meaningful employment in the post-COVID-19 economy. The work group was charged to place a special focus on people who are unemployed, underemployed, face barriers to employment, or fall into the group of disconnected youth to ensure that no one gets left behind. The work group, through research, determined that the post-COVID-19 economy won't have a surge of new jobs. Rather, the pandemic has greatly accelerated the pace of change due to the advances in technology, such as AI and automation, and advances in infrastructure such as 5G that rapidly changed the nature of jobs we have today. The post-pandemic world will require everyone to embrace the concept of lifelong learning, to continuously engage in training to learn new evolving skills to be relevant and to thrive in this new workplace. To respond to this change, changing nature of work, a close public-private collaboration is crucial creative outside the box solutions such as apprenticeships and work-based learning partnerships will provide a pathway to those who could not previously access them. It will also allow businesses to inform the training to ensure that the training provided will match their needs and minimize the skills gap. Second, access to technology for all is imperative but not just providing the equipment, to, but also providing access to training and sufficient bandwidth. Finally, there needs to be a centralized location for all the information and resources to provide easy access to individuals in need of training and employment, businesses looking for right training partners to develop a talent pipeline, and service providers to provide valuable connections. Thank you for the privilege of charging, chairing the work group. The work group members and I are eager to begin working on the recommendations to be part of the solution. First, I want to thank the County Executive Ball and former County Executive Allman for allowing me to participate on the Family Opportunities Work Group. You know, when we got together, we recognized the impact that the COVID vaccine, the COVID impact had on our communities. And so we wanted to make sure that we not only made immediate recommendations to address housing, food, childcare, transportation, and digital inclusion. We wanted to make sure that we also looked towards the future because we understood once Maryland got back open and we all returned back to normal, that our families would still be in crisis. And so we also want to make sure that we continue to look forward and continue to look down the road. And so we made recommendations also for sustainable and long-term change because we realized that those challenges for our families will not go away. So you have the report, so I'm not gonna go into the highlights because they're all amazing, but I want to give you just some insight on why we made the recommendations we did. The first was data. So I know I've heard a lot of my other chairs talk about data and how important it is, and we want to make sure that we had recommendations that allowed Howard County and the executive to utilize that data to make real-time, real decisions. Second was the analytics, right? 
and making sure that we have the opportunity so that they can make those real-time decisions. Centralization and collaboration was our second goal that we wanted to make sure that we accomplished. Our nonprofits and our county agencies did amazing work. And we wanted to make sure that we made recommendations that would allow them to collaborate and continue the great things that they've been doing throughout the county. And finally, access and awareness. As you can imagine, being a family in crisis and having to find the website or the agency or where do you go for help and services. And we want to make sure that we made that as simple and easy and streamlined, not only for the residents of Howard County, but the employees that also serve them as well. So again, those were the, what we decided to make sure that we want to make sure we move Howard County forward. And again, thank you for your time today. We also want to do some final uh, acknowledgements as well. If you are a work group member, please wave your hand uh, to be recognized. Thank you. We also want to recognize Mike Kelly from the Baltimore Metropolitan Council for lending special expertise on data, et cetera. And finally, many of our staff and subject matter experts, if you could also wave so you could be recognized. Thank you. And now we'll take questions from the press. If there are any. Yes. The question for those who are joining on Facebook is, do you believe it is safe for, to follow the governor's reopening? Dr. Ball? In Howard County, we have aligned with the governor uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, because the mask and the physical distancing requirements are still in place, and talking with many of our restaurateurs, for example, there aren't going to be uh, significant differences on how many people should be in those restaurants. Also, we recognize that a patchwork throughout the state actually breeds confusion and difficulty for people to adhere to the requirements. And we are hopeful that with more vaccine coming online and to the state of Maryland and Howard County, we'll be able to quickly accelerate people being able to get access to the vaccine going into the various phases. And we think that continued communication on staying masked, physical distancing, staying away from large gatherings will help continue to keep people safe. Any other questions from the press? Excellent, we had such amazing speakers. No other questions. <laughs>